action for another day of the week. Welcome to the Wednesday edition of Chasing That Paper, presented by Vegas. Insider.com jam-packed show plan for you guys today. Big basketball show, NBA, some college hoops. Uh, Kevin Rogers will be along shortly. So coming off another winning day yesterday, 3-2. and two. No big deal, but I'll take it. Try to bring that winning energy back into today. So big basketball pick show in the first half, second half. We're going to get into some baseball talk. Of course, uh, Shohei Otani, the World Baseball Classic. What a moment that was versus Mike Trout last night. So we're going to talk a little Otani. Take a look at the uh, the odds for his next team and make our predictions for that. And also we have a season betting preview for the New York Yankees. We're going to do a handful of these before the season starts. I think we're, what, eight days away? Start of Major League Baseball season. Pretty pumped for that. And I'm pretty pumped for our guest here today, Kevin Rogers. Let's bring him in. Down there in sunny Florida. Kevin, uh, did you catch the uh, Japan-United States baseball game last night? Yes, and uh, good to have you. Uh, I'm going to say good to have you on the show, Joe. No, it's your show. Uh, good to see you again. But, um, no, it, it was a really great finish, and everyone talking about Shohei Otani coming in the ninth, and unfortunately, Mike Trout didn't have anybody on base because uh, whoever was up before him hit into a double play. So Trout was up with two outs, and granted, he couldn't hit a walk-off homers or anything because they were at the top of the ninth, but still – Seeing Trout against Otani, and Otani just smoked him in those three pitches was unbelievable. And again, if somebody was watching baseball for the first time, like, oh, Otani's a pretty good pitcher. Then you'd say, oh, he's a pretty good hitter, too. Watch him hit the ball, too. So it was pretty impressive to see what he did on that stage. And good for Japan for them to win that game. Trey Turner had obviously a great WBC, hit that uh, hit that early home run, but they just couldn't get any more offense going. But uh, yes, uh, a lot of fun, and you and I, Joe, I guess I'll speak for you, that we're excited baseball starts next week, so it's it's a good little appetizer going into the season. It's certainly all, it is uh, certainly all downhill from here in 2023 for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, California, so we're going to have more uh, Otani talk in the second half of the show here, but let's get right into tonight's action. We're going to start things off in the NBA in sunny Miami, Florida. It is the return of the CTP sweet spot. Give me the Knicks plus one and a half in this one. So, yeah, indeed, the CTP sweet spot is back. We fade the Miami Heat after a win around here. This is the situation they're in for this game as they're coming off a win in their most recent game versus the Pissers. Congratulations on that. Heat are covering at just 28.6% after a win. 10, 25, and 3 ATS. This is the worst in the NBA in this spot. Also, they're an awful bet at home. 11, 24, and 2 ATS. This is the worst in the NBA in this spot. And you dig into the stats here. It's fairly close in a couple areas, but also some big advantages for the Knicks, notably... Miami, 29th in opponent EFG percentage over the last 10 games. Also, Knicks, second in rebounds per 100 possessions. Heat, 29th in rebounds per 100 possessions over the last 10 games. Give me the Knicks as a small dog in this one. Ho, ho, ho. All right, Kevin, over to College Hoops. What are we looking at? Well, the NIT continues tonight, Joe. You had uh, Wisconsin win last night at Oregon to move to the Final Four. And also in the uh, in the other game was North Texas knocking off Oklahoma State in overtime. So those two teams advanced to the NIT Final Four. Two more spots up tonight. And the first game, UAB and Vanderbilt, they meet in Nashville. This game is down to a pick em, And I'm going to take UAB here as my first best bet of the day. The Blazers so far have had two pretty uh, resounding victories. The first two rounds uh, of the NIT, Vanderbilt just slipped by Michigan on Saturday, a game that they probably should have lost. But UAB, though, they've won 20 of their past 27 games, five losses by three or less. So they've had a lot of close shaves in uh, some of those defeats. And look, Jerry Stack has done a fantastic job bringing Vandy basketball, uh, making it somewhat relevant. It's very hard to do that. And they were in the middle of the pack of the SEC this year. They beat Kentucky a few times down the stretch and uh, winning 12 of their uh, final 14 games. Also, they've won seven straight at home, but this number has dropped. Vandy was laying a point and a half, two points to open. It's now a pick 'em. 
I'd still go with UAB here, even in that spot. I think UAB has got an excellent opportunity to win this game on the road. So let's back the Blazers here to beat the Commodores as our first best bet, Joe. All right, Kevin likes the Blazers in college hoops. I'm going to be fading the NBA version of the Blazers. That's right. Give me the Utah Jazz minus five and a half with Portland in 10 here tonight. So not that they were great at any point of the season, but the Trail Blazers have completely fallen off of a cliff and the blowout losses are starting to pile up. 11 double digit losses in their last 19 games including in four of their last five games. Check this out. They're on a stretch that's seen them go in insane. Four and 18 against the spread in their last 22 games as an underdog. Probably should have led with that. So you dig into the stats, some major advantages for the Utah Jazz here. Most notably in the paint. Last 10 games, Jazz are top eight in points scored and allowed in the paint. Portland 24th and 23rd in these categories. Also, look at rebounding. First versus 27th in rebounds per 100 possessions in favor of the Utah Jazz. And the Blazers' defense is quite simply dog shit. 26th in opponent EFG percentage over the last 10 games. 29th in points allowed per 100 possessions in that spin. Give me the Jazz. Minus five and a half. All right, Kevin, back to college hoops. What do we got next? Joe, the second NIT game, I'm sure you've talked a lot about on Chasing That Paper uh, yes. throughout the last year. Utah Valley, the uh, the Wolverines of Utah Eight. Valley, and they're taking on Cincinnati tonight <gasps> in the uh, the last NIT game. And this game is actually at Utah Valley due to uh, the floor being redone at Cincinnati's arena. That's why they had to move uh, their last round game against uh, Hofstra. They won on the road. Now they got to go out to Utah Valley. I'm going to take Utah Valley here to pick them. And for the Wolverines, coached by Mark Madsen, the former L.A. Laker and yeah. Stanford standout, this is the biggest home game that Utah Valley's ever had, uh, with Cincinnati coming to uh, to town, to Orem, Utah, which is lovely this time of year. But uh, Utah Valley, 10-2 and against the spread the last 12 games. They got squeezed by Southern Utah in the WAC tournament by one. They had a really heartbreaking loss there. Probably his team could be in the NCAA tournament. And uh, like I mentioned, second straight road game for Cincinnati. They beat Virginia Tech in the first NIT game, handily at home, and then went to Hofstra and won. And now we're going out to Utah Valley. Utah Valley, again, you're trying to make waves, just trying to get to their first ever NIT Final Four. They have not been at the Division One level very long. They're a very good team. I think that uh, here it's going to be a rocking joint there in Orem. So let's back Utah Valley here against Cincinnati as our second best bet, Joe. Utah Valley. Yeah, I got a big group of people coming over to watch that game tonight. Got a keg. Pizzas. Yeah, uh, big Utah Valley game. Okay, back to the NBA. Uh, Phoenix Suns, Lakers getting after tonight. Not quite as star-studded as it could be. Of course, no Kevin Durant. No LeBron James in this one. But I'm going to take a shot on the Lakers as a tiny, tiny underdog in this one. Lakers plus one. But check out Los Angeles' defense lately. This will absolutely keep them in. This game, last 10 games, second in opponent EFG, third in points allowed per 100 possessions, first in three-point defense, and they're doing a great job at keeping opponents off the free throw line, unlike the Suns, who are dead last in opponent free throw attempt rate over the last 10 games, which lines up incredibly with a Lakers team that's getting to the free throw line a lot. Third in free throw attempt rate over the last 10 for LA, and this looks like a great spot for Anthony Davis to dominate DeAndre Aiden out of the lineup here for the Suns. Worth noting that he had a 37-point game versus the Suns last time he played them. He will be hard to contain in this one. Give me the Lakers plus one versus the Suns. All right, Kevin, bring it home for us here. What do we got for your final pick of the show? We're going to look ahead to tomorrow, Joe, with the NCAA tournament resuming the Sweet 16. You have four games, and we're going to focus on Madison Square Garden in New York, FAU taking on Tennessee, and we're going to back the Owls against the Volunteers here as FAU is an underdog. And Tennessee is coming off a very impressive win over Duke on Saturday to advance to the Sweet 16, but the issue is they were an underdog. And Rick Barnes, as the head coach of the Volunteers, 2-7 and seven against the spread, as a favorite in the NCAA tournament. So they've had problems covering. They did not cover in 
their uh, opening game of the tournament. So we'll see uh, what they do here against FAU. And for uh, the Owls, 4-1 and one straight up against the spread. Their last five as an underdog. They weren't really sharp against Fairleigh Dickinson. It was a really tough spot for them. After they had knocked off Memphis in the opener of the last second basket, or, or basket in the last few seconds, that they played Fairleigh Dickinson, who had pulled off the miraculous upset over uh, Purdue, the top seed. And Fairleigh Dickinson and FAU were pretty close for most of that game until FAU opened it up. They were laying 16 in that game, Joe. And now they're getting points here uh, in New York. Tennessee also down the stretch. They had some injuries. They split their final 14 games. Tennessee off this huge win over Duke. FAU not so sharp against FDU. I think that FAU here will put up a better effort and getting them the dog spot. They're that close to the Elite Eight where they avoided Purdue. I think that FAU is the play here. So let's take the Owls of FAU against Tennessee. FAU. There you have it. Underdog pick for uh, Kevin. Uh, guys, if you're watching on YouTube right now, do me a favor. There's a like button right down there. There's a subscribe button right down there. And give each of those a little click. Makes me look pretty good. Uh, the more engagement we get on these videos. So uh, do me a favor. Hook me up with a click. It takes half of a second to do that. So six picks from Kevin and I. If you're looking to hail any of that action or fade any of that action or to play some action of your own, I recommend opening up a book over at BetMGM. Let me tell you a little bit about them. Sign up with BetMGM and use the promo code VIBONUS1100 and you will get up to $1,100 paid back in bonus bets if your first bet does not win. That's VIBONUS1100, all one word, no spaces for a first bet offer of $1,100 paid back in bonus bets if you don't win. So that code again, VIBONUS1100. Visit BetMGM.com. For terms and conditions, you must be 21 or older offers for new customers only. Bet MGM, the king of sports books. So, yeah, Major League Baseball, uh, this is awesome. Last night was incredible. That was one of the, the coolest baseball moments ever, probably. I don't think that's an exaggeration. Otani pitching to uh to try we talk about how great of a hitter he is you know he goes out in uh, batting practice and puts on an absolute display he's a fantastic pitcher just mows him down you see him run from uh home plate to first he's extremely fast as well this guy's got it all he's on the right side of 30 here too but one thing he doesn't have is a good major league baseball team you know it's funny all the jokes they write themselves him and Trout uh, on the Angels, who are complete and total disgrace. So all signs point to Otani leaving the Angels after this year. He becomes a free agent. He's probably going to get the richest contract in baseball history. And why would he stick with the Anaheim Angels? You know, we don't have a whole lot of information on this. For all we know, he really likes it there. I don't know if that's really the case, but... You know, he's probably got a lot of smart people behind him, and he has seen this franchise completely waste Mike Trout's prime. They're wasting the start of Otani's prime right now. The ballpark is an absolute dump that they play in. The team has no historic significance whatsoever, and he's likely to have a ton of bidders here uh, to line up to pay him what will probably be the richest contract in Major League Baseball history. Uh, we put a poll up on the Vegas Insider Twitter feed asking you guys, uh, a couple of the candidates here, uh, who has the best shot at signing Shohei Otani if he leaves the Angels in free agency after this season? Uh, my pick is the Dodgers. I'll get into that in a moment. 48.1%. The Mets, 192 uh, Yankees tied with the Mets there, and the Cubs, who are expected to uh, be back into the mix here after taking a couple of years off to uh, restock the, the cupboards of their uh, their farm system. Uh, but they'll be eager to spend a couple dollars here as well. So here's my thoughts on this. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to outbid uh, Mr. Bobby Axelrod there, the uh, owner of the New York Mets. Of course, I'm talking about Steve Cohen. Uh, I'm sure he'd be eager to hand over a, a blank check to Otani. But I think it's going to be the Dodgers where he ends up going. You know, he doesn't really have to move. He's in the L.A. area right now. The Dodgers are a winning team with a winning history. 
Uh, they've proven that they can build a winner, and uh, you know they're in the playoffs basically every year. Otani wants to play playoff baseball. They're going to have a ton of money here too. They had a quiet off season. All that money that they gave uh, Trevor Bauer obviously comes off the books for them here as well. Uh, who knows? Is there an allure to New York City for him? If there is, maybe there would be an attraction in taking all that money that the Mets will be willing to pay him, taking the money that the Yankees would be willing to pay him. Maybe he's a guy who doesn't want a whole lot of uh, media attention. In that case, what about a team like the San Diego Padres, who's been throwing a lot of money Around. And then you do have the fridge contenders. Uh, the Giants apparently were in play for him when he first came into the league, same as the uh, Seattle Mariners. The Giants seem to have a uh, uh, money burning a hole in their pocket. Of course, they went after Judge and uh, Carlos Correa in the offseason. That didn't really work out. And uh, I mentioned the Cubs as well. Uh, they took a couple of years off from contending, went into a, a little bit of a mini rebuild, but they appear to be ready to start spending Again, if uh, the Dance B. Swanson contract is any evidence of that. So what do you say, Kevin? Uh, if you Make your prediction. Where do you think Otani's playing for? Who do you think he signs with after this season? I think he goes to New York. I don't know if it's the Yankees or the Mets, but I think he goes to New York. I think the problem with going to the Dodgers, Joe, is that I, I live on the East Coast most of my life. I feel like there's an East Coast bias. And uh, you're out West, you get lost. And I feel like that's kind of what happened with LeBron going to the Lakers, that uh, you get a little lost. You're, you're playing those late games. You're not playing those early games anymore. And Otani needs to be showcased that what this guy is doing, we have never seen this. Our generation, I mean, you say, oh, Babe Ruth, okay, 70 years ago. Our generation has never seen a guy that could hit like this and pitch like this, that he's not a fringe reliever. This guy's a starting pitcher. This guy could be a Cy Young winner uh, in Major League Baseball, which is insane. And, and to do all of this, he is definitely way more appealing than Mike Trout. I mean, Mike Trout's a fantastic player, yeah. but Otani, just seeing what he did at least last night on that, on that worldwide stage coming in the ninth inning, uh, a walk which barely missed the strike zone on that, on that full count, and then a, a double play ball, and then striking out one of the best hitters in all of baseball. That was very, very, very impressive for Shohei Otani. And he's with the Angels, which have not had the playoff success, and no one's really paying attention to them. They already have a, a, a champion team in their division, Houston, that's going to be impossible to jump over so the only way you're going to get in is through a wild card houston's not giving up that division anytime soon i think that otani needs to be showcased in a place like new york if it's the yankees the mets like you said they're willing to spend money i spent a ton of money on justin verlander who's at the end of the line i know verlander won the cy young but verlander is definitely running out of time in his career they spent a lot of money on him they spent a lot of money on max scherzer I think that the uh, the Yankees or the Mets should be the destination for him whenever he's done with the Angels. I guess it's kind of a mystery as to what he cares about as well. Like often you hear about in the NBA when a guy's going into free agency and it's like, oh, he wants to be in a major market. You know, does Otani care about that? Would he be more inclined to go to a place like San Diego or uh, Seattle potentially? Uh, someone threw out the Astros as well. You know, they... No. They've been happy to just let these guys walk. They've let uh, Springer walk, Correa walk, Verlander walk. You got to figure they're sitting on a pile of cash. So who knows? You know, they've built a uh, a, a pretty good, uh, I wouldn't quite call them a dynasty, but they're in the mix every single year. So who knows? Uh, one online sports book actually threw up some odds here. Dodgers are the favorite here coming in at plus 500, followed by the Mets plus 550, the Yankees six to one. The Padres, like they're just giving out blank checks to anyone. Seven to one. The Phillies, I don't really see that. Uh, the Texas Rangers, they're handing out some silly money as well. The uh, Giants in the mix. The Red Sox at eleven to one. Now the Red Sox are getting just destroyed. Uh, just letting their homegrown talent just walk out the door, being super cheap. So. Who knows? That team has got a history over the past couple of decades of spending a shit ton of money. So maybe they'll ante up, you know? Do we think the Red Sox are going to be happy if they finish this season at what it looks to be to be the worst team in the AL East? 
Are they just going to sit back? Who knows? That could be a, a bit of an outlier there as well for the Red Sox. But it's kind of funny with Otani. I think we're going to see more of this because it used to happen, you know, once you get to a certain level of baseball, they would say, okay, you have to pick between uh, pitching and hitting. We haven't really seen this since, you know, of course, Babe Ruth. And there's been the occasional pitcher once they, uh, they're they turning the rotation. If they're in the National League, we got to see them hit and they were a decent hitter. But I think we're seeing just so many super athletes these days, regardless of what sport it is. So I think in another five years, we're going to see another version of Otani. Maybe not to this extent. Maybe a poor man's Otani. But I think we will see more of this in the future. Hey, it's fun. This is what Major League Baseball needs. They've been awful at promoting their stars, but this seems like uh, something that can't fail. Uh, Shohei Otani. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what he does here in his contract year 2023. Uh, let me tell you guys a little bit about the Vegas Insider app right now. It gives you all the major sports betting odds at your fingertips, along with picks and expert breakdowns. You can shop for the best odds, find props, features, and plenty more. With the app, if you want more Vegas Insider content like our shows, videos, and podcasts, you can find it all on the app in the media section. Download the Vegas Insider app on Apple or Android. Bet better with the Vegas Insider app. Okay, yeah, Major League Baseball season right around the corner here. It gets going here next week. And, of course, one of the most popular teams, one of the most polarizing teams, is the New York Yankees. They typically have a great regular season, come up short in the playoffs. So let's take a, a look at the Yankees uh, from a betting perspective going in to the season. And we're each going to give out our favorite bet for the Yankees here in 2023. So Yankees near the top of the odds board there, plus 850 to win the World Series, to win the AL pennant, plus 370, to win the AL East. I think that's an okay bet, plus 120. Over under wins, 93 and a half. Now, a couple of weeks ago, if you guys watch the show on the regular, you know that I like the over on that quite a bit. It's a bet that I've already locked in. And their odds to make the playoffs, minus 500. Probably a bet that a lot of people aren't making. Not a whole lot of appeal with a minus 500 bet. So, I was on with Ian. I think we did a show about two weeks ago. We gave out our favorite over-under bets, and I talked about how much I like the Yankees, possibly to, uh, you know, they had 91, nine wins last season. I like them to go over that number of 93 and a half, get into the 100-win territory. Now, since then, new odds have been released, and they have odds up for which team finishes the regular season with the best record, and I think we can get fantastic odds, fantastic value on the Yankees here. Plus 850 for the Yankees to have the best regular season record. I absolutely love this bet. So they will really benefit from the new schedule alignment this season. The number of divisional games for each team will decrease from 76 to 52. So that means fewer games versus other top contenders in the division like the Blue Jays and the Rays. I think it's very realistic that they improve upon their 99 wins from last season. And I think we should expect them to score more in 2023. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what the hell are you talking about? They had one of the best offenses in the league last year, Joe. Yeah, but they were actually kind of unlucky. They finished 27th in batting average in balls in play. Despite this, they still have the second most runs. They were fourth in OPS, so expect some more luck at the plate. And also, I love the starting rotation with the addition of Carlos Rodon. He's only expected to miss a handful of starts. So not that big of a red flag there. And a potential big season from a Luis Severino contract year for him. And let's be honest, this is the same odds for them to win the World Series here, plus 850. That's not happening. The Yankees are a great regular season team. Over the past couple of decades, maybe the best regular season team in all of Major League Baseball. But lately, they fold like a cheap suit when the games matter most. So I'm not going to touch them in the playoffs. But I like that regular season bet for the Yankees. Now, Kevin, I know you have a player prop that you like for the Yankees. But your outlook on the Yankees coming into the season, do you think that, you know, it's... A, they're going to win the division. Do you think they fold once again in the playoffs? How do you see 2023 going for the Yankees? 
Well, you make a good point, Joe, about the uh, the amount of games they play against the rest of their division. I actually love the uh, the new format uh, that they're playing every single team this year, as opposed to I mean, how many times going to see the Yankees play the Orioles? How many times going to see the Marlins play the Nationals? Like, I mean, it's enough is enough already. So I like that now you're playing everybody. So that throws a little wrench into it because now you're starting to play. Now the Yankees instead of playing Toronto and Tampa Bay, they'll be playing Atlanta. They'll be playing, obviously, they'll play the Mets a few times. They'll be playing Atlanta and playing the Dodgers. They'll be playing the Padres. They'll be playing all these teams. So you kind of wonder how that's going to work out in those games. But the Yankees, they have had this nice track record of getting into the postseason under Aaron Boone. The problem is they've not gone very far, and they have found ways when they face Houston to lose to Houston in the playoffs. So as far as winning the division, you know, obviously – we talked about before, Boston's probably not a factor. Baltimore's probably not there yet. Toronto is close, but as long as they have the pitching, we know they have the lineup. And Tampa Bay, they always make moves, but are always involved. I got to still think the Yankees win the division. I don't know how far they get in the playoffs. That's my biggest uh, problem with them. It's just because that Houston is their kryptonite. They don't know how to beat them uh, in the playoffs. So, I do think the Yankees probably win the division again. There's just so much talent. Again, you got to be healthy. Keeping Aaron Judge was a huge uh, deal, obviously. But yes, it will be very interesting to see with all the rule changes, with the schedule changes, if that really makes that big of a difference this year or not with these uh, with these very good teams in Major League Baseball. Oh my God, does this team ever tighten up when the games matter <laughs> their most? Right? They they just absolutely crumble come playoff time. But like I said, they're fantastic during the regular season where the games for the most part are, are meaningless, especially when it comes to a big picture here for Yankees fans. But you have a season long player prop type of bet that you like here as it relates to the New York Yankees. Tell us a little bit about it. I understand it is uh, a favorite here in the running, Joe, but I like Garrett Cole to record the most strikeouts uh, among any pitcher in Major League Baseball. And it's at plus 550. And again, you know, you could say I'll oh, take someone 30 or 40 to one, but this guy's a freaking horse. All right. He's top three in strikeouts in four of the past five seasons. You want to know the season he wasn't top three? 2020, the COVID year. So we can throw all of that out anyway. So basically, in a normal season, this guy is always going to be. Uh, in the running to have the most strikeouts in baseball. 257 last year. In 2021, how about this number, Joe? Your guy Robbie Ray with the Blue Jays when he won the Cy Young had 248 strikeouts. Zach Wheeler with the Phillies had 247. Garrett Cole had 243. Both Ray and Wheeler had two more starts than Cole, and he finished five strikeouts behind. So he needed one start, and he probably would have uh, won again in 2021. And it's, you always have the caveat, he has to be healthy. I understand. This guy is healthy. He puts up seven, eight strikeouts a game. We know there's a lot of other guys like Corbin Burns of the Brewers that's always going to be in that running. And again, Wheeler, Ray gets a lot of strikeouts. But Garrett Cole, it's just hard to deny what he's done. He's always going to be up there as long as he's healthy. I don't think plus 550 is, uh, is crazy. I don't think it's like a favorite. It's not chalky. By any stretch, but sometimes these come in. You don't have to always take a 30 or 40 to 1 shot to win and, and feel good about yourself. So I think Garrett Cole, most strikeouts to lead Major League Baseball among any pitcher. That is my Yankee play for this year, Joe. Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, Cole, pretty durable. Uh, it should be noted, Kevin, that not only is Garrett Cole the ace of the New York Yankees, who will be the ace of my fantasy baseball team uh, in my draft there last night. So I, I got Cole. Uh, Shane Bieber, number two. Not too bad. Okay, so uh, there you have it. Our look at the uh, New York Yankees 2023 betting outlook. Best of luck with your Yankees bets. Unless you're picking them to win the World Series. I'm a Blue Jays fan. I don't think that's a smart bet either way. The Yankees to win the World Series. But they have the best regular season record. I don't think you can go wrong with that. At plus 850. Okay, guys, now I'll tell you about uh, today's Handicapper Heat Check presented by VegasInsider.com. You're home for the best expert picks in the business since 1997. Today's featured expert is Scott Pritchard, who is on fire in the NBA, going on an 8-1 and one win streak. Now, this pitcher of Scott, it looks like one of those pitchers where the guy doesn't know what to do with their arms. Um, 
that's my analysis of that. But anyhow, yeah, he's hot in the NBA. Eight eight and one rule he's on. Uh, Steven Nover, five and one in all sports over his last six picks there last night. And an ASA nailed five straight NBA winners. Visit VegasInsider.com slash picks for tonight's hoops. Uh, plays that's your handicapper, he check. Stay hot, betters. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Kevin, winding right down here, but you got a lot going on here at Vegas Insider. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, Joe, we have more college basketball best bets for the Sweet 16 Thursday and Friday. Those videos are out on our YouTube channel at Vegas Insider TV, so you can uh, check those out. And Friday, I'm going to tape an Elite Eight uh, video for Saturday, so uh, we'll keep an eye out for that. I obviously can't give you any of that because we don't know who's playing in the games yet. But uh, we'll have that coming up uh, later in the week. We have more uh, NBA best bet videos coming out uh, this week. At least today we'll have one. We went 2-0 and Monday, went 0-2 last night, so we'll try to bounce back today. But uh, good NBA card, so we'll have some NBA best bets for you coming out uh, in a little bit. So keep an eye out for that. There you have it. Lots of great content here at Vegas Insider. Make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel. So going to be right back uh, tomorrow. Ian McMillan will be back. We'll be all over the Sweet 16. Of course, the NBA, some NHL action as well. And we're going to have a season betting preview for the other New York baseball team, the New York Mets. So we thank Kevin for uh, joining us. We thank you, dear viewer, for checking us out today. Best of luck with your bets tonight, unless, of course, you are fading us. And as always, keep chasing that paper. Woo!